Hi everyone, welcome to Urban Outdoor Adventures. I'm up here on Lower Buckhorn Lake with my good friend Aaliyah. We've had record storms come through the area and uh, a huge cold front, pretty chilly this morning. Stay tuned as we go for cold front musky. Urban Outdoor Adventures, teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. Urban Outdoor Adventures, sponsored by Prince Craft Boats. The more you know, the better we look. Rapala, crafted from experience. Columbia Sportswear, avoid road rage, stay out of cars. Hi everyone, welcome to the show. We're up here on Lower Buckhorn Lake. We're actually in the, right in the middle of a cold front this week we're going to be fishing for muskie so we're going to try some different techniques downsizing baits and uh, slower presentations i'm up here with my good friend Aaliyah schick and uh, Aaliyah was actually crowned miss alaska 2005 right yes miss so, alaska usa there's two different ones oh i'm sorry miss alaska <laughs> usa that's right so uh we're gonna go out we've been sort of uh faced with some adverse weather conditions here. It's been clouds in, clouds out. We've got a cold front come through. As you can see, we're wrapped up this morning. It's pretty chilly, but uh, we'll get out there. We'll experiment with some different techniques and we'll see what we can do. So I oh, think we better get, get a good get... one. Well, that's the idea, right? I'm gonna get the bigger one than you, but. Absolutely. I won't show you up too much. <laughs> You're gonna try though, right? I can. All right, well, the sun's coming up. What do you say we get out there? Let's go. This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean and former Miss Alaska USA, Aliyah Sheik, head to Lower Buckhorn Lake for midsummer muskie. Lower Buckhorn Lake can be found in southern Ontario, situated between Upper Buckhorn Lake and Lovesick Lake on the Kawartha chain of lakes. The pair booked into Beechwood Resort, nestled in Deer Bay on the lake's south side. Lower Buckhorn Lake is only one and a half hours from Toronto, two hours from Kingston, and a mere 20 minutes from Peterborough. Convenient aspects of the Kawartha Lakes are the numerous locks scattered throughout the system. These aqua elevators allow anglers and pleasure boaters easy access to and from one beautiful body of water to another. Various rental accommodations can be found scattered around the shores of the lake. However, Sean chose this particular resort as it offers a variety of amenities for anglers and families alike, including a convenient boat launch, docking, rental boats, supervised water skiing and tubing activities, and swimming pool. Fishing licenses for both residents and non-residents are available from the main lodge. A unique aspect of this resort is that it offers both fully equipped self-catering cottages as well as rooms in the main lodge. Accommodations are very comfortable. You will also find a fully licensed restaurant where the meals and service are quite simply first class. The owners of the resort, the Morgan family, will do everything to make your stay an enjoyable and memorable one. This week's target species are muskie. Other popular sport fish species available are walleye, small and large mouth bass, carp, perch, and other panfish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. That was a sissy throw. You know he's going to the beauty pageant business. No, nah, I'll be an HBBQ by the November 5th. Is that what they call it, an HBBQ? <laughs> That's what us girls call it, a has-been beauty queen. <laughs> be a has-been. Was that your strategy there? To hit Jump the rock? Jump off the rock? No. Make it look like a frog or something? Here we go, Leah. Right off that rock pile there. Am I? I think it's very big. I'm stuck on something. I oh, stuck on a rock. <laughs> we got a Leah snagged up on the rock here, and I got a muskie on down here. Let's see if we can get a look at him. Oh, there he is. 
Woohoo! I'm gonna get this fish in Alia and I'll come and unhook you. There you go. Grab my pliers here. He's off. With my lure. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that. Open the split ring or the snap right up on this thing. It wasn't a very big fish, but somehow he managed to open that up and uh, take off with my jerk bait. I'm gonna tie another one on. Just wanna to touch on the fact that that fish got away there. I don't know how it happened. Somehow this snap opened. These things are like a Chinese puzzle, so I have no idea how the thing came open. Initially, I was a little annoyed that I lost my uh, jerk bait there, but uh, bottom line is, I'm now feeling a little bit guilty for the fish. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. The fish wasn't hooked too deeply. I'm hoping he's going to lose that lure. If he can shake that lure off, then he'll be fine. Um, but uh, as you can see, we're using heavy, stiff steel leaders here. Got a heavy snap here that attaches to the bait. And uh, as I say, I really don't know how it happened, but use a leader regardless and uh, just hope they don't open the snap on you. Are you still hung up? Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Wait, I got it. There you go. You got it. We're fishing some classic structure for the Kawatha Lakes here. We've got a rock island here, small island with a point coming out and jagged rocks on the end here. Drops down to about 12 feet where we are right now. And you've got a weed flat that leads up onto these rocks. We've got a deep channel out in the middle here, drops down to about 50 feet out there, gives those fish the security to come up here and feed and then the ability to drop down into that deeper water there. If you find areas like this anywhere up in the Kawathas, generally you're going to find musky. I've tied on this bucktail here what I found, we've got a little bit deeper water here, really nice, fresh, crisp weeds. There's no algae on them. Problem is they're coming right up to the surface. The gliding jerk bait that I was using was getting caught up. Once you get weed around those gliding baits like that, you tend to lose all action. So what I've done is I've tied on good old bucktail here, and that's enabling me to work through and across the tops of those weeds there. As I said, we've got the islands up here that we were fishing. We've drifted out. We found a really nice patch of weeds here. When you get into an area like this, where the weeds are right up to the surface and catching your bait, tie on a bucktail, give that a try. Look at this, Aaliyah. I think my bait's bigger than this uh, bass here. I think my weed's bigger than that bass. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. It's exactly the same length as my lure. This goes to show you, you can never throw a bait that's too big. There you go, Dave, perfect spot, right by the rental boats. Thank you. Get a screw in there. Courtesy of Muskies Canada, great organization in Canada that uh, deal with a lot of preservation and education on the species of muskie. We have this sign here that they've donated to Dave at the resort. We've got the four primary species of muskie on here so you can identify them. It also tells you how to distinguish between a pike and a muskie. And uh, most importantly here, we have the legal limit on the lake. A lot of these guys, you see them coming in with little 20-inch fish, 24-inch fish, and uh, it's not, I don't think, a vindictive move on their behalf for just, just to get a meal in the frying pan. I think it's primarily the fact that they simply don't know the rules and regulations. Do you run into that quite a bit? Not very often, but it's basically, uh, it's just that they don't understand what the, re what the regulations are, they do not read it. So with having this by the boats uh, before they get in will definitely uh, ensure that we won't have that problem probably anymore. So thanks to Muskies Canada, great organization, people are getting educated on the species, and above all, make sure you know what your legal limits are when you're going out for muskie. We've been pounding the water 
pretty heavy here this morning and uh, been throwing gliding jerk baits, crank baits and uh, weren't really seeing a lot of action going on so what we've done is we've gone back and resorted to the good old bucktails. I got a black here with a chartreuse blade, chartreuse and fire tiger I should say. I got uh, Aaliyah throwing a fire tiger bucktail there with the same blade. What this is allowing us to do is to cover a lot of water very quickly. Now normally a summer pattern is to fish these baits really fast under the surface, burning them, especially early in the morning, making a bow wake in the water there. But what we're doing, based on the cold front conditions that we're faced, is we're actually slowing our presentations down a bit. Instead of the usual high speed retrieve I would be doing like this, we're sort of slowing it down, varying the speed, just keeping that bucktail just above the weeds there. Yeah, I think I got one here, Leah. <laughs> I think so. Oh, yeah, he's pulling pretty good. Good swirl. Those bucktails, I'll tell you what, it's cold front situation here right now. This is a nice fish. I'm going to need you to get my cradle. It's a very the nice what? fish. In that uh, thing in the side there, there's a cradle. If you can just open that up. See the black mesh thing there? Yep. So you can get that. This fish is probably 40 inches long here. Cold front conditions. We're using slightly smaller than normal spinner but uh, bucktails here. I, should, I can't even talk. I'm so excited here. This oh, is he's a, a good one. Yeah, he's a nice fish. You want to put this in? And, uh, oh, hang on. You can just, uh, actually, if I hold that, just move that other rod down to the back there for me. And uh, I don't want him to go around the trolling motor here. We're just slowing down. the fish I had. Yeah. We're just slowing down our presentations here. And I've got Aaliyah throwing a slightly smaller bucktail. Typical. There he is. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Just trying to keep us off these rocks here. I don't, don't know how well. He's not very well hooked. He's only got one hook in the top lip there. So I'm just going to play him nice and slowly so I don't pull that out. And. Uh, we're just going to pull away from these rocks here a little bit. So what I can, what I do, Leah, is I get you to come in here. That's a nice fish. I get you to hold the cradle. Oh, I don't want him to get off. Okay, so you hold the end. This is a nice musk. Okay, you're going to need to go over the edge a little bit if you can. Can you reach over there? As long as I go Okay, I'm going to bring him right in. Okay, then close it up. We got him. <laughs> Oh, no, don't lift it up. We'll leave them in the water here. And, uh, hey. All right. I'm still saying that was my fish that yeah. I had. It's been a lot of work, but uh, as you can see, a little patient pays off, right? Yep. Okay. The hooks actually come right out of this fish already. I'm going to be careful here because they tend to thrash around a little bit when you're unhooking them. I'm going to get this hook out of this net here, Leah, because he's thrashing around. Oh. First of all, I don't want him to get the hook into me. And second of all, I don't want him to get the hook into his face there again. There we go. I can always get another cradle, right? So, I would like a picture of this fish. Would you mind uh, if I um, get the camera taking a shot of me holding this guy? Yeah. All right. I have one too, so. Okay. CPR. Brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. Okay, you ready? Oh. Okay. There we go. Finally, a musky. Okay, let's get him back in the water here, Leah. I can't stress enough, I say it in every musky show that we do, it's so important that you put these guys back. They're a valuable resource. So important that uh, you let these big guys go. It's hard to believe when we were fighting that fish that it was sunny, and now these clouds have rolled back in again. All right. Your turn next, my friend. Yes. Your turn next. I still say that one was mine. <laughs> it could have been. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Sean's 40-inch muskie hit a bucktail cast down the side of an island. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. Water depths on the side of the island were between 5 and 7 feet. The left side of the island led up onto a large weed flat. The right side dropped off steeply into 19 to 22 feet. A weed line ran along the edge of the island stemming from the weed flat, tapering off toward the deeper water on the right side of the island. 
Midway down the weed line, Sean observed a small alcove that displayed sparser weeds and scattered boulders. Here, the weeds parted slightly, forming two secondary weed edges. The strike zone in this scenario was the opening in the small alcove. The sparser weeds and scattered boulders offered a perfect feeding area for smaller predators. The aggressive muskie was sitting in ambush, tucked in tight to the weeds in the right side of the opening. Sean cast parallel to the structure, placing his black bucktail as close to the island as possible. Use your polarized glasses to locate structure. It could pay dividends. When fishing cold front conditions, be patient and stay positive. Slow down your presentations, vary lure size and your retrieval speeds. Cover areas methodically as muskie become lethargic during cold fronts. Aaliyah actually hooked into three muskie on this trip, but unfortunately did not land one. Simply hooking into a muskie can be enough to keep you going. Try packing ultra-light gear when going on a muskie trip. Hand fishing can make a relaxing break from throwing heavy muskie tackle. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. The beautiful thing about the Kawatha Lakes is they're all joined by lock systems here. We're fishing on Lower Buckhorn here this morning. The fishing's been a bit scratchy, yeah, yeah. not too productive. So I've actually got a couple of spots on Lovesick Lake below us here. So we're going to head through the lock and check out some of the spots I've got down there just to see if the action's a little better. So when you pull up to the lock, slow way down. Make sure you have your ropes and your bumpers ready. We've got a blue line on one side. That's where you tie up to signal to the lock master that you're going to be going through. If you tie up on the other side, it just means you're stopping for a few minutes. Put two lines around the uh, slider wires that go in the lock. And as you can see, here we are in another lake. We're on uh, Lovesick Lake right now. We were on Lower Buckhorn before. And uh, we're going to go get some muskie. You're going to get that big one? I'm getting them. All right. Yeah, oh, there we go little rock bass. What we've done, we've taken a little break from the musky fishing. Can pay a bit of a toll on you as far as uh, aching bones, eh? And uh, what we'll often do is carry a couple of uh, seven foot ultralight rods like this, spooled up with four pound tests, some little uh, tube jigs and tube heads, and uh, just take a little break during the day. Come in, it's nice fish from shore here. Got some weeds here right by the lock, just loaded with crappie and smallmouth and uh, those rock bass there that we keep getting, eh? There we go. And we cast Whoa, it in the same spot. Just a spot. little guy. Do that black bucktail the... again, eh, Leah? Yes. Look at him jumping. Where'd you put the mesh thing at? Back oh, I don't need that. You know what? He's just a little guy. I'm just going to okay. uh, probably hand land this guy. Uh, he's just hooked in the corner of the mouth there. Yeah, let's just grab the hook out here. There we go. Oh, little guy. Yeah. Look at he's been right there. Little uh, healthy little guys though. They tend to jump a lot, these little fellows. Makes it quite a oh I see what you're talking about yeah, now on the see. nose. Look at the nose on this guy here. He's uh, obviously had a, a run in with something in his life. Seems to have healed up. But his complete top of his oh, uh, mouth need is a missing. Kiss. Mm. Oh give him a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get him back in the water. That black bucktail again, eh? There he goes. Yeah. There he goes. All right. Okay, let's get one on that yellow bucktail now, okay? Yeah, we cast it in the same spot, <laughs> you hog. <laughs> so when you're, uh, when Miss Alaska is not being Miss Alaska, what are you doing with yourself, Aaliyah? Well, usually busy studying at the University of Alaska Anchorage. I'm a major in telecommunications and film, so I usually during hockey season am editing or shooting, editing, writing my own scripts for my own hockey show that I host. What's that? Uh, where does that air? What's that? Where does that air? At Air State Y. It's for the WCHA. Oh, cool. So I can shoot hockey. Let me see this for a second. 
We got a new so, cameraman, guys. Uh, what does Sean do when he's not fishing? Um, as little as possible, but uh, uh, we're generally out in the lake pretty much. There's a fish right there. Oh, yeah, I think it's a bass, though. I don't think it's a muskie. It's a well, nice. We know fishing isn't a, a job. It's a nice bass. Oh, look at the size of this largemouth here. Oh, <laughs> On a bucktail, fishing for muskie, and he's got both hooks in him. So I'm gonna have to be careful here. Look at that, guys. Look at the. That's a nice largemouth. I'm just gonna see if I can get yeah, these hooks yeah. out here. Okay. One there. And this one should just pop right out. There we go. Look at that. Nice uh, largemouth bass fishing for muskie. Any more questions? This is what we do for a living. <laughs> that sums right. it up. Let's get him back. Let's go through some of the equipment and lures that we used on this trip. Inline bucktails were by far the most productive bait, black being the primary color. Other colors that work well are chartreuse and fire tiger in both the double hook and single hook models. Experiment with different blade sizes with your inline spinners. Try using a larger blade for a slow retrieve. Manta gliding jerk baits are also a productive bait on this trip and always use a solid titanium leader when using gliding jerk baits. You're gonna need a heavy action musky rod in either a spinning or bait casting style teamed up with a good quality bait casting or spinning reel that has a good line capacity and a good drag system. Line choices should be 50 to 80 pound braid. I prefer monofilament. I like the stretch in the line. If you're fishing bucktails, I suggest using a stainless steel or titanium leader to help cut through those weeds. Don't be afraid to experiment with your retrieve. Slow down, downsize your baits, especially when fishing a cold front. Don't forget to log on to our website and post your fishing, camping, and outdoor pictures on the CPR section of our message board. If your picture is chosen as a runner-up, you could receive a brand new digital camera. Post your pictures today. You might just be our next winner. Well, everyone, unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. We've had uh, somewhat of a trying day up here, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> We've had... Um, Ex very extreme weather. We've had clouds coming in and out all day. As you can see, it's uh, pretty much an open sky right now. We've had a serious cold front conditions. It's actually got quite warm this evening. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a muskie in the boat for you. <laughs> they say it's the fish of 10,000 casts. I think you've yeah. made about 4,000 of those so far. So maybe next no time. No luck, just bites. Yeah. I guess I'll have to go back to the five inch heels, the gowns and the crowns. That's right. <laughs> I want to thank Jeff King at uh, the Pickering Canadian Tire. We actually had some trailer problems on the way up here and uh, we had to get him fixed in a hurry. He was an amazing help, got us on the road. If it wasn't for him, we probably wouldn't have been filming the show today. So thanks, Jeff. And uh, thanks to Aaliyah for Thank coming you. on the show. You've been a great sport, I tell I you. I had fun. You're hardcore. Well, that's right. This girl's been casting all day and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Sorry we didn't get a fish in the boat. It happens. That's musky fishing. My name's Sean Rickard. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for yet another Urban Outdoor Adventure. Urban Outdoor Adventures, sponsored by Lakeport. Great beer, fair prices. Nikon Canada, simply better pictures. Pure Energy, the number one rechargeable battery in Canada. I've got to get out of f***ed off, lost my lure mode into happy host mode now. <laughs> okay.